Let's talk about the five most undervalued skills that could revolutionize your career if you are a marketer or your company if your marketing team has them. What do you look for when you hire someone for a marketing position? We get hundreds of applications every time we post a marketing position, whether it is for an internal marketing role or for a conversion rate optimization specialist. A team member asked me about the skills that I look for when someone joins our team. Now, depending on the position, if it's a senior role, we always assess if someone has the skills we are looking for. And if it's a junior role, then we always look for someone with the will to learn the skills that we seek. This video is not about those core skills. It is about the additional skills that are difficult to interview for, but they can take you from here to here. Let's jump right in. Number one, the most difficult skill to interview for. Curiosity, the eternal why child. Remember when you were a kid and drove everyone mad with your incessant whys? Or maybe you are in the driver's seat nowadays and your kids are the ones asking you why. That is gold in marketing. We take too many things for granted in marketing. So we end up with uncreative marketing that copies from one campaign to another and from one company to the next. My favorite answer that I like to hear from clients when I ask them why they did something one way or another is, well, you know, we've always done it that way. Curiosity leads us to explore consumer behavior and human psychology. And I cannot tell you how many times I was sure that people would act a certain way or react to a campaign in a different way. And then I was surprised by their completely different responses. So how do I interview for curiosity? That is a tough question because in reality, you cannot interview for curiosity. You can sense it from someone's behavior. Behavior. Are they always asking more questions? Are they always looking for more answers? Or are they just satisfied with a simple answer? Number two, data analysis. Now, if you hate numbers, this will be a tough one for you. I will not tell you that we live in an age where data is everywhere. As a matter of fact, I think most marketers and most companies suck at data. They confuse collecting data with analyzing data. And there is a humongous difference between the two. Let me give you an example. I posted a position for an analytics lead and provided candidates with access to our analytics to analyze. 80% of the candidates spend their time reading to me the reports that are provided within Google Analytics. I mean, reports are already there and those candidates got a grade of F from me. I can already read that data myself. 10% of the candidates spend time showing me how our data and our analytics could have been configured better. And I agree. This group though also got an F grade from me as well. Why is that? Well, because our dev team could have noticed the same issues and fixed them. Yes, our dev team should have done that and they did not, but that is a separate conversation with our dev lead. Most of the remaining 10% of candidates tried to give me some recommendation of things that we should consider changing or modifying on our website, which I appreciate. The problem is that most of their analysis was way too simplistic. Only two candidates dug deep into the data and came up with a bunch of hypotheses and questions that we should ask based on multiple data points. Those two candidates got an A grade from me. The moral of the story is that you will become the most valuable member of your marketing team if you can dig deep into data. Data tells you what's going on on your site. It does not tell you the why. And to discover the why, you go back to point one that we just mentioned and ask why are people behaving this way? Take the stakeholders on a journey of questions and answers. Number three, adaptability, the marketing chameleon. The field of marketing is always changing. There are new trends every other day. Too many marketers like to chase the next shiny object. Don't do that. Why? Well, because it will fade away. 10 years ago, a successful marketer was a T-shaped marketer, someone who knows a lot about different areas of marketing, but digs deep into one particular field. Not anymore. A successful marketer nowadays is a multi T-shaped marketer, someone who knows a lot about different disciplines of marketing and digs deep into multiple of those fields. Since we specialize in experimentation and conversion optimization, let me give you an example. A CRO, a conversion rate optimization specialist, must know a lot about multiple fields, consumer behavior, analytics, design, usability, statistics, data analysis, and so on. Each of these fields has multiple disciplines within it. So if we look at just usability, you can look at 
user research, interaction design, information architecture, visual design, usability and accessibility, computer interaction and human-centered design, mobile usability, usability testing, psychology, human factors. There are people who specialize in each of these sub areas and have spent years learning each of them. Obviously, you cannot do that, but you need to know enough about each of those areas and delve deeper into one of them. Number four, collaboration. Really? Working with a team? That matters? Yes, it does matter. Marketing is a team sport. It is not an activity that you do by yourself. But you might tell yourself, well, I'm a freelancer and I work alone. No, you do not work alone. Not if you want your marketing to deliver results. Well, how? Do you want me to hire a bunch of people? No. But even if you are a freelancer, you work closely with your clients. You ask them questions. You don't take simple answers from them. There is nothing simple about marketing. Number five, the art of selling without selling or storytelling. Great marketers are amazing storytellers. They are not amazing presentation designers. You can take the most boring presentation, add stories to it, and by doing that, you take it to the next level. Looking for something even better? Take the numbers and tell the story behind them. And when you are telling the story, add your emotions to it. The book Brain Rules highlights that people are likely to remember only 10% of information presented orally to them, 70 two hours. However, the figure goes up to 65% if you add a story. Good storytelling makes you and your brand unforgettable. And there you have it, folks, the five most undervalued skills in marketing. Now, if you are interested in learning about any of these fields and how to get better at any of these skills, leave a comment and I'll respond to you from there. Until next time, happy testing.